All right, guys, that's enough of the building materials exhibit. Now, look, over here, we'll get a few shots of uh, Miss Hoosett's making the Marie, cake. Marie, Anne Marie. And we'll do the interview while she takes the cake out of the oven. Right. Now, step right over here, honey. And this is where you... Now, let's remember to keep the state seal in the background so we can see it behind Miss... Um, what's her name? Uh, Marie. It's Anne Marie. Doesn't she have something to do? Do something, Anne. Make, make the cake. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's just great. I don't know. I think I forgot something. Cake tins? No. Spatula? No. Oh, excuse me. New York State has everything display. Rouser. Who? Anne Marie. Oh, that's me, Miss Hooses. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, dear. Hello. Oh, hi, Donald, darling. Oh, everything is fine. Just fine. Tonight? Why? Oh, you're kidding. Two tickets to the opening of Goodbye, Jonah? Oh, Donald, you're fantastic. And everybody said you couldn't part the Hudson River. How soon? How soon? Are you ready when the little lady is? Don't worry. I will be on time, Please. I promise. Uh, Miss Hoosis, if you don't mind. Uh, yes, sir. Donald, I'll see you at 6 o'clock at Nino's. Right, I'll be there. Okay. I love you, too. Bye. Uh, could you just thank you? Thank you. <laughs> Hit those lights. Come on, fellas. Up in here. Let's get Let's started. go. Come on. Can we? Ready. Aye. Hello. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this is that girl? <laughs> I was really a terrific actress today. What actress? I thought all you had to do was bake a cake. I don't know how to bake a cake. I had to act like I was baking a cake. I mean, I put in some cheese and flour and milk and eggs. And, and that's baking a cake. I baked a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till Donald finds out that you can really bake a cake instead of acting like you can bake a cake. Oh, Donald, I'm going to meet him in 20 minutes at Nino's. He got tickets tonight for the opening of Goodbye, Jonah. Oh, wow, how'd he do that? I hear it's another fiddler. Here, listen, help me take these off. Mm. What do you want to borrow? How'd you know? I heard Harry yelling oh. as I was coming up the stairs. Yeah, whole milk. I thought he was supposed to take non-fat. Yeah, true, but, well, he says it makes him sick. Drinking non-fat milk makes him sick? No, not drinking it. Putting it in his coffee and watching it turn gray. <laughs> in the refrigerator, top shelf. Help yourself. Oh, thanks. Hey, Annie, what time do we get to see you uh, baking your little heart on on TV? 7.30 on the news, and be sure and watch and tell me how I look. Aren't you gonna watch it? I can't. I'll be at Nino's with Donald. And besides, once you convinced me I was baking and not really acting, I lost interest. <laughs> Another beer, Don? No, thanks, Tommy. Never could get used to drinking alone. Listen, that's women. I know that's women. That's why I told Ann to meet me here at 6.00. So I'd be sure she'd be here at 6.30. Oh, no, I hope Donald's giving me his usual half hour. Mm. That's funny. Oh, my gosh. Where is it? It's got to be here. What could I have done with it? Ring. Your engagement ring? What other kind of ring is there? Wait a minute. Let's
Let's not panic. Why? What else is panic for if not losing your engagement ring? That makes a lot of sense. Now, let's see. If I were you, what would I do with my ring when I go to change? You'd take it off and you'd lose it. Now, wait a minute, Annie. Relax. It happens to everybody sooner or later. This is not sooner or later. This is right now. It happened to me a week after I got married. What did you do? Well, very calmly, very matter-of-factly, I searched the apartment without going crazy. Yeah? And then I walked to the window, and I found it in the window box. How did you know it was in the window box? I didn't. I noticed it as I was climbing up to jump out. Oh, mercy. Still busy? Only for the last 15 minutes. You don't think something's wrong, do you? Ordinarily, no. But then again, Ann knows we have to catch an opening tonight. Listen, I better take a ride over there just in case if you can sell the table, fine. Don't worry about it. I just hope everything's okay. If I know Ann, she has a perfectly logical explanation, like she thought I meant the Ninos in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Thank you. Where else would you put it where you know it'd be safe? I don't know. We've looked every safe place I can think of. They found it! Somebody found the it! The mailbox! You took it off to open the mailbox! Yes! Hi there. Donald. You remember my name. Hey, Don. Oh, Donald, listen, about my being late. What happened? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Are you all right? I'd rather not answer that question right now. She was robbed. <laughs> robbed? Well, not, not quite. What do you mean, not quite? Either something's missing or it's not. I was robbed. Well, that's for Pete's sake. Let's call the police. No wonder I couldn't get through. Donald, don't wait a minute. Don't call the police. Why not? Because, because I'm the robber. Is she making any sense to you? Uh, yes, she is. And I would like to add goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, she's gone. You can talk normally now. Oh, Donald, I don't know what to say. Uh, maybe if I came in again. Oh, wait a minute, Donald, please. J just tell me that you love me and, and that you'll never get mad at me. Because if you ever got mad at me and we and we had a really terrible argument, you might ask me for my ring back, and I, I really couldn't give it back. I don't have it. Oh, honey, you've lost the ring. If you're going to strangle me, Donald, you're supposed to hold me by the neck. Don't be silly. You called me silly. <laughs> I didn't call you silly. I said, don't be silly. Now, look, let's figure out where the ring is. Where did you lose it? Oh, Donald, what an awful question. If I knew... I, I, I mean, when did you notice it was missing? Oh, Donald, I have asked and answered myself all those questions. Honey, all, all right, now, look, s settle down here. Just sit down. Now, the ring exists someplace. If we concentrate hard enough, we may find it. And I want you to know the ring is insured against loss. So at the very worst, we'll get the money back... Don't and... tell me how much it cost. I, I, I won't. And I'll get you another one, okay? Well, it's not okay, Donald. That's the ring you gave me when you asked me to marry you. I mean, it's not like some dumb old gift you've given me before that was meaningless. Look at a man get attacked for four long years of Christmas shopping and birthday presents. Oh, Donald, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. It's just that I'm very upset. I love that ring and everything about it. All right, honey, all right. Now, look, calmly and scientifically, when do you first think you lost it? Calmly and scientifically? I haven't the faintest idea. Uh, all right, all right, look. Maybe it'll be better if we start from the very beginning. What's the first thing you did when you got up this morning? Oh, Donald, I've already walked through all that with Marcy. I'm absolutely positive I had it on when I went to the convention center. Faking. You took it off to... I did not. Ask Mr. Magelson. Okay. Uh, Mr. Magelson, you! Oh, Donald, please. Mr. Magelson is in charge of the New York State display, and he specifically asked me to leave my ring on so that I'd look like an average homemaker. By the way, I was very good. <laughs> How about after the cake when you were washing up? No, Donald, I know for certain that I had my ring on until I sat down at the wastebasket. It could have dropped in my wastebasket by the dressing table. This is your father. Oh, hi, Daddy. Why are you calling? They hear a babbling sound. Every once in a while, I feel an urge to listen to a babbling sound. I can't telephone a brook, so I call my daughter. Oh, Daddy, I'm so 
sorry. I thought you might be calling about my ring. I mean, not that you'd be calling about my ring, because I didn't really know it was you, but I mean, somebody might be calling about my ring. Anne, what are you talking about? Daddy, I've lost my ring, my engagement ring. How much did it cost? Daddy, I don't know how much it cost. It's not important how much it cost. That's right. Hollinger bought it, not you. Daddy, money isn't the important thing. It's the sentimental value. Sentimental, sentimental. Where did you lose it? Why does everybody keep asking me where I lost it? If I knew where I lost it, I'd go there and find it. Well, did you? Did I what? Go there and find it. No, of course I didn't go there and find it. I have no idea where there is. Then think. Where did you lose it? Daddy! All right, let me ask you a practical question and don't get upset with me. Was the ring insured? Yes, it's insured. Then, my dear, you have nothing to be concerned about. Boy, oh boy, all you men are alike. Don't you put any other value on an engagement ring other than money? Don't you realize that when you give us those engagement rings, you're giving us a symbol of love, a, a lifetime of waiting, a, a future that holds plans and, and joy and, and hope? And the ring is a part of that realization. You just can't separate it, Daddy. You just can't go get another ring. I mean, insurance is fine, but it just isn't the same thing. You really have to try and understand that, Daddy. I mean, you really do. Daddy. Daddy. Hi, honey. I just went for my coffee. Now, what were you saying? Daddy. Honey. Oh, Daddy, I I've got to go. Why were you calling me? just to say hello and to ask you why Hollinger is always in that apartment. Hello, and he's not always in my apartment. He's here a lot because he should be here a lot. After all, he is my fiance, and he's here now because he's helping me find my engagement ring. Okay? Okay, and I hope you find it. Just to make sure, I'll give you a ring tomorrow. Daddy, I don't want you to give me a ring. Donald gave me that ring. Anne, I mean a phone call. Oh. Anne? Uh, Daddy, I gotta go. I gotta go. Bye. Where are you? In here. Donald, what are you doing? I wasn't under there today. Yeah, I know, but you may have dropped the ring in the sink and it may be in the trap. Ow! Watch your head. You watch it. I can't stand the sight of blood. Now, honey, tell me if the water is on or off. Oh, just a minute. Yeah, it's on. Good. Good. <laughs> Donald, I'm so... Sorry. Listen, that's all right, honey. After all that work, I needed to freshen up. Oh, I could die. Honey, honey, look. It's just about 7.30. Why don't we go and catch a little part of our show, and then we can come back here and look for the ring. You mean to say that you could actually sit in a theater and enjoy a show, knowing that my engagement ring is goodness knows where? Oh, the television said I'm on the news. <laughs> I'm going to go in the bedroom and check once more. Well, there's one consolation. At least it'll be fun seeing you this afternoon, back in the good old days. According to official White House sources, the Prime Minister's visit will end with the usual tour of Disneyland. Now for the local news. In New York City today, festivities got underway, marking the beginning of New York Has Everything Week. Hey, honey, I think this is you. Oh, good. For a special report, let's go to Ron Rouser at the convention center. Dinner? No, thanks. This is Ron Raza, along with Clifford Mackelson of the State Public Information Office. Well, Cliff, what's this display all about? Well, Ray, our official Miss Everything is about to take a beautiful cheesecake out of the oven for a final garnishing with fresh strawberries. How do I look? Fantastic. You'd never know you were on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Now, as I understand it, every single ingredient in that cake comes from New York State. That is correct. This cake is merely a dramatic illustration to tourists and businessmen alike that he can find everything uh, under the sun right here in New York. Mm, very interesting. In this case, we have homegrown New York flour, New York butter, butter. Uh, eggs, Cream. And diamonds. <laughs> Donald, look! My ring! Delicious. What ring? Exactly what ring? I had it on Doesn't when I started, I don't have it on when I finished. <laughs> Donald, my ring is in that cheesecake. <laughs> Well, at least now you know where you lost the ring. I should have known the cream cheese was going to be slippery. You feel better now? No, Donald, do you know what this means? 
I think so. As of now, I'm officially engaged to a cheesecake. Donald, how can you joke at a time like this? Considering I just blew 24 bucks on two tickets to an opening, I haven't the faintest idea. What are we gonna do? Honey, it's really very simple. All we have to do is run down to the convention center. That's pick it. Up That's the... exactly what we'll do. I'll get my purse. Maybe we can even make it for the middle of Act One. Sure, if we pray for a miracle. What miracle? We run into a well-dressed stick-up man who orders me to change clothes with him. <laughs> It's probably over here, Donald, on the table. Oh, now, just a minute, just a minute. We don't open till tomorrow. Oh, my gosh, my cake. Where's my cake? Uh, now, miss, please. Uh, it's all right. I miss everything. Who? Uh, to see Mr. Magelson. Yes, you see, this morning I baked him a cheesecake, but the recipe didn't call for a carrot and a half. Right, look, it's a long, horrible story. If you could just tell us where we can find Mr. Magelson. Uh, yes, and my cheesecake. Oh, well, he left for the governor's townhouse an hour ago, and I would assume he had your cake with him. Governor Rockefeller's townhouse? Yes, he's hosting some kind of convention week kickoff dinner. Dinner? Donald, that means dessert. I've got to call over there right away. I just hope my ring insurance covers abdominal surgery. I beg your pardon? The governor will understand. <laughs> Listen, could you just please connect me with the person in charge of cakes? Cakes. You know, food. Miss, I am not psychotic. I happen to be a very nice person who's about to have a nervous breakdown if you don't... Hello, hello. Miss. Something tells me you just proved her point. I made perfect sense. It's just such a stupid story. What? We're having dinner with the Rockefellers. Well, that took you long enough. Oh, good heavens. Come on, move! The coffee and dessert should have been on ten minutes ago. Hey, Laszlo, where do you want the girl for the cake? What are you talking about? This is the governor's house. All I know is she says she goes with the cake. I'm sorry, but I just had to get in before it's too late. There it is. There's my cake. Your cake? Yeah, we've got to see the person in charge right away. You... That's me. You? Who are you, anyway? I miss everything. Oh, miss everything. And you, you're Mr. Wonderful. Well, well, I was up until 6.30 tonight. That's when he found out I lost his ring. Her engagement ring. In that cake. Which she baked this afternoon at the convention center. For those people inside. Let me get this straight. You say that your ring is in that beautiful cake that I should be serving this very second? Right. And for which there's no substitute dessert. Well, maybe if you use a long, skinny fork, it wouldn't be too messy. A long, skinny fork. <laughs> oh, please, sir. It's my only engagement ring. <sighs> oh, very well. There, that's it. That's enough. Well, uh, could you, uh, cut it up? Cut it up? Listen, you've got to. If somebody in there swallows that ring, they'll get sick and you'll go to jail. I'll be there anyway for killing her. <laughs> Well, miss everything? Nothing. It just has to be in there. It just has to be. Well, why don't you walk around in it? Maybe you'll feel it with your toes. <laughs> Listen, we're really very sorry, but we had to do it. I know my ring came off while I was baking this cake. How am I going to serve this mess? Well, maybe you could cover it up with whipped cream and serve it in little... Yeah, maybe I could put it in the blender and serve it with a straw. <laughs> and maybe yet a better maybe. Maybe you could... Uh, sir, please. Donald, what are we going to do? I've got to find my ring. Honey, let's face it. We've done everything we can do. I'll vouch for that. Oh, come on. I'm going to take you home. It's been a long, horrible day. Listen, sir, if you do happen to find my ring... I'll stuff it in a squab and send it over. <laughs> Donald, I am being realistic. I'm not even thinking of the money. It's the sentimental value. Well, not only that, I mean the bad luck. What bad luck? You mean to say it isn't a bad omen to lose your engagement ring? Uh, honey, frankly, the only thing I mean to say is good night before we both collapse. Yeah, I guess you're right. Tomorrow's another day. Finally. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. 
Marcy! Happy birthday. It's not my birthday. It's all right. It's not a present. What is it? Oh, I don't know. I came over before, and it was in front of her door, so I took it to my apartment. Well, what is this? <gasps> Donald, look, it's the cake. It's my cake. Oh, and look, the chef glued it back together. What, what, wait a minute. He also glued a note on the top of the box. Dear Miss Hooses, enclosed is your cake, which miraculously collapsed exactly an hour after we took it from the oven. We've had another one baked and sent over to the governor. We thought Miss Hooses would like her own whatchamacallit back. Best wishes, what's his name? Magelson. Oh, uh, uh, wait a minute. Why? Well, we know the ring is in the cake, right? Yeah, well, we think it is. Well, if the ring is in the cake, it doesn't make any difference whether we mess it up or whether we cut it nice and neatly. No, I guess you're right. So rather than messing up the cake, which you worked very hard to make and bake, why don't we just sit down nice and quietly and cut it piece by piece and eat it with milk until we find the ring? Well, that does make some sense. Because then if it isn't in there, it'll be longer before we know it isn't in there. Right, and then at least... Oh, we'll... I can't stand it! <laughs> I got it! I got it! Annie, oh, I got Marcy. it! Oh, Marcy! Oh, my <laughs> ring! Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, ju just a minute. It's for you. Hello? Here, I'm gonna go check the parking meter. Okay. Oh, hello, Laszlo. Oh, that's very nice of you, but I did find it. Yes, it was in a different cake. <laughs> but thank you very much for calling. That's very nice. Bye. Mm. What a sweet man. Yeah. Where's Donald? I said he wanted to go out and check the parking meter. Hello? Hello, Miss Marie. Yes, this is me. This is Governor Rockefeller. Governor Rockefeller? Y you mean th the real governor who's governor? I think so, unless you've been talking to some of my opponents. Oh, no. Marcy, I think I'm in terrible trouble. I feel obligated to say something to you about my dessert. Oh, uh, is, is that so? <laughs> Your governor, Chip, Miss. <laughs> I've just heard that our Miss Everything has somehow lost her engagement ring in the service of her state, and I wanted you to know how sorry I am about it. Oh, oh my, that's really very nice of you. Actually, I found my ring. You see, it was in another cake that you were supposed to get that I had baked for you, but you didn't get because it collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you're, uh, you're really doing a marvelous job governing. Thank you for the compliment, and thank you for ruining my dessert. Your loss of a ring was probably responsible for my loss of a pound. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's very funny. You know, Governor, if I may say so, New York really does have everything, including a governor with a sense of humor. Thank you, Miss Marie, and good night. My best to your fiancé. Oh, goodbye. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him. Goodbye. I can't believe that. That was the governor. The real governor? Honestly, it was right here on the phone. I mean, I can't believe it. Where'd he get your number I don't from? know. I have no idea. The book. You're in the I book. I mean, it's just like in the movies. I mean, it's like a last-minute call from the governor. And Donald wasn't even here. Donald! Donald, you'll never guess who just called me. Who? The governor. Oh, honey. He did. He did. Miss Marie, I feel obligated to say something to you regarding what happened to you tonight and my phone call. Honey, this cake is delicious. Oh, do you really like it? Honestly, it's great. It's got a real different, interesting flavor. Describe it. Describe it? Uh-huh. Well, it's kind of like, um, uh, mocha. Uh, no, 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 not mocha. It's, um, uh, more like a, a prune. Prune. No, no, not prune. Uh, it's a kind of a gingery, uh, a gingery fudge. Ginger fudge. No, no, no. Well, I, I don't know what it is, honey. It doesn't make any difference because it's great. Oh, Donald, I'm glad you like it. I didn't want to tell you before you tasted it, but I made it myself. I concentrated all day and I made it all by myself. Well, you can be really proud of yourself because it's really great. I've never tasted anything like it. Donald. What? Where's my bar of soap? I don't know. Well, that's funny. I saw it here all afternoon while I was making my cake. I remember picking it up once to wash my hands after I mixed the batter. Then the phone rang, and I dropped it somewhere. And... Oh, Donald, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Yeah.
you find a 